I've been trying to tell you for 15 years, I want you to read your Bible. Because there's a whole lot of stuff that sounds true, but may not actually be in Bible. Uh, uh, this too shall pass. That sounds good. But that ain't nowhere in Scripture. God will never put more on you than you can. God, I wish that were true. But that ain't nowhere in Bible. Here's what I know I'm going to get you. The race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but to... That ain't nowhere in Bible. <laughs> what it says is, the race is not to the swift, the battle to the strong, but time and chance happens to everyone. There's nowhere in Bible that says, but to those who endure to the end. The reason I want you to know that is because there will always be those who try to convince and condone that something is of Bible that ain't actually in Bible. When you chop and mix and remix and paraphrase and combine, you can make the Bible say whatever you want it to say. And you may not know this, but there are those in the world who are proficient at taking scripture out of context. There are those who are good at telling you what verse 17 said, but won't read verse 16. There are a lot of folk that are real good at paraphrasing and stretching and distorting what the Word of God actually says so they can have a scripture and a verse to back up their politic and their ideology. It is when you mix and paraphrase and cut and chop and remix and combine that you wind up with the basis of hypocrisy in Christianity. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Prelude, Alfred Street Baptist Church, new pre-worship broadcast. I am Minister Otis Burt, Jr., assistant to the pastor for online ministry and engagement, and again, it is our honor to have you worshiping with us in the virtual space on this morning. Remember, we're here every Sunday morning, 7.36 a.m. and 10.36 a.m., and we want you to come and join us. As you can see, the sanctuary is already filled with worshipers. Well, except for that little section right there. And that's because we are blessed to be able to have our baby dedications on this morning. So those families will be there. As you can see, Pastor Wesley is walking around shaking hands and greeting our worshipers. And we are here to shake hands with you virtually yes. and to welcome you. And guess what? I did not come alone. Today, I am honored, I am Holy Ghost happy. Holy Ghost happy. Holy Ghost happy to have one of the greatest women that I know to come and co-host oh, with you, us. Otis. She is a woman that is a part of the fabric of the Alfred Street Baptist Church, an awesome director in the music, worship, and arts program, the one and the only, the capable, the energetic, the one that will take off running I'm and take pastor with I'm going to have to buy him lunch. It. I'm going to have to buy him lunch. <laughs> the one and only, Miss Theron Johnson. Welcome, Hi, Theron. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Otis. And hello to everyone online. It's so good to be a part of this moment today. Yes, yes, yes. So, Theron, how long have you been director of VLT? How long have you been with Alpha Street? Tell us something about it. I have been with Alpha Street nearly 30 years, Ooh. and I've been with the Voices of Triumph for 27 of those years. Now, now Theron, you, you are 27, so how did you, you start directing as a baby? It's just a miracle. <laughs> oh, this is just a miracle. It's a miracle. Yeah, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. <laughs> But it's just been a joy to be a part of just the ministry at our church, be under our, our leader, Dr. Wesley, and all the things that we are doing here. We are a busy church, but a productive one. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, how, when does VOT rehearse? What type of music does VOT sing? VOT sings everything from the hymns to spirituals to gospel, contemporary gospel, you name it. We'll either even do honky tonk if it talks about <laughs> Jesus. We are willing to do anything that would reach God's people. 
and have him to be edified. You all know our online audience. We want to shout you out. Put in your name, your city, where you're from, because we want to call you out on this morning. So go ahead, put your name. If you're watching with your spouse, with your children, with your grandparents, yes. with the dog, there with the cat, go, the them. pet snake, all of them. the guinea pig, put That's them all right. put in them the all chat. There. We want to be able <laughs> to right. welcome you in today. Well, Theron, we can't have two directors on here and not talk about some gospel music. That's right. Absolutely. So what? tell me one of your favorite songs that VOT sings. Well, I said healing this morning. There's so many. Turning around for me. y'all sang that this morning. Turning <laughs> around for me. It's just for Sean one. Mitchell. Oh, yes. Yes, Because yes. when God turns you around, you never can go back. It's yeah. such a good thing. Yes, 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 yes. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. It's, it's, it's turning. turning in your favor. That's Absolutely. Right. That's right. If I, if I can think back, I really enjoyed uh, when I directed Antioch, uh, Chris and Kyle, have, uh, have an arrangement of all Hill the power. Oh, come on now. One of my favorites, yes. that sevenfold our Love man at name. the end come with on. two modulations. I, I love good choir Not singing. One. Yeah. He said two. two. That's right. Two. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So we are glad to have you all on today. So again, continue to put your name where you're from. I saw that we had some folks from Bahamas. I saw that we had some folks checking in from Jersey. So continue to check in and we want to call you out. Well, you all know on the prelude, we yes, we aim to engage with you, our virtual audience, but we also want to connect you with our in-person worshipers. And today, we have a very special guest. Come on over. Come on over, Brian. I'm personally excited to have my Morehouse brother, my Glee Club brother. And my son sharing with his mother. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. If you would, introduce yourself to our online audience. Uh, everybody, I am uh, Deacon Brian Nails. Deacon, did y'all hear that? Deacon, that's right, Deacon. that's right, that's Shout right. Shout out to my, uh, the my 31 people out there. If you're from 31, put it in the chat. Let us see it. Good morning. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Let's talk VOT. Okay, well, Brian is our vice president of the choir. VP. And um, he's been there for a minute in that role because we just love him there. Long time. Bri Brian, <laughs> when did you join VOT? Uh, Might have been 2012. Yeah, I'd say time. that's about right. Yeah, that's yeah, about yeah, right. Yeah. And has made an impact not only in his leadership capacity, but just for the love that Brian brings to the fold. I'm so grateful and love I'm you to death. I'm grateful to be a part. I love you too. Yes, right. <laughs> Absolutely. Brian, talk to us about a memorable experience that you've had singing with VOT. Oh, man. I'm actually going to go back to before I sang with VOT. Okay. I was sitting in the pews, and uh, this choir came up the aisles, and I was sitting on the far side, and uh, the sopranos were, in, you know, singing right there. And VOT came with so much power and praise. I was like, who is this soprano singing in my ear? And uh, God rest her soul, uh, Carolyn Heyman. Carolyn Heyman. Yeah, yeah. But that experience, that 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 uh, feeling of, of worship inside, that's what made me join VOT. Yeah. yeah. And let me tell you something, y'all. If nobody else worships and prays, <laughs> VOT is going to worship and they are going to praise. Brian, thank you so much for being with us, and we'll see you in worship. We're going to let him go so he can finish warming up so that Theron won't uh, fuss at him. Fuss at him, yeah. That's right, that's right. <laughs> well, you all, you all know that this month is Women's History Month, and here at ASBC, we want to take the time to highlight, to honor those women that have made considerable contributions to our world. And today, we have a very special woman very. that we will be highlighting, Miss Ruth Carter. We have a video we'd like you to, we would like for you to check out now. Check it out. As we celebrate Women's History Month, let us celebrate the first black woman to win multiple Academy Awards in any category. Costume designer, Ruth Carter. Ruth Carter put an immaculate thread and needle to work by creating the unforgettable costumes for Black Panther and Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Through her costume designs, Carter pays tribute to the people of Africa, creating Afrofuturistic pieces that empower the female form, honor ancient cultures, and invoke a deep sense of representation unlike any other costumes experienced on screen. Carter has earned 70 credits over three decades in film, television, and theater, and collaborated with prolific directors including Spike Lee, Steven Spielberg, Ava DuVernay, and Ryan Coogler. Carter's costumes, based on real and imaginative characters, provide an arc to the narratives of African Americans in Do the Right Thing, Malcolm X, What's Love Got to Do With It, Amistad, The Butler, Marshall, 
Selma. And coming to America, we salute and celebrate this brilliant and beautiful woman for Women's History Month. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What an so awesome uh, tribute to an amazing woman. We thank you, Ms. Ruth Carter, thank for you, all Carter. of your contributions. Yes, yes, absolutely. absolutely. So let's listen. Let's uh, ch uh, call out a few people online. Um, let's see who we have. We have King Xavier checking in from York, Pennsylvania. King, all right Welcome now. and good morning. Welcome. Speaking of King, our very own Carl King is checking in from Bedside Baptist. There we go. Carl, Carl what's up, man? Welcome. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> we also see we have Kimberly Davis Lamar checking in from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. New Jersey is Jersey in the house. Jersey is in the house. We also have Dorothy Dotson and checking in from Butler, Pennsylvania. PA is in the house. Okay, Pennsylvania. Speaking of Pennsylvania, Alfred Street everywhere will be heading to Philadelphia this year, so get ready coming, and look coming. out for those announcements. That's right. Well, Theron, there is always something going on. All the time. At ASBC. Yes, sir. We keep so busy working for the master, and That's you all right. know during the month, month of March, we are in March gladness, uh, uh, Alfred Street's Spring Revival, That's and right. the first two weeks have yes. been amazing. Phenomenal. If you have missed it, you have missed a treat. We started with the Reverend Dr. John Faison. Last week we Reverend. had Reverend, Reverend Marissa Farrow. And you all, this week we're going higher and higher. Every round goes higher as we welcome the Reverend R. Janae Pitts Murdoch. We will be ready. She will be in the house. So you all tune in on Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Well, you all, it is time for worship. The choir is preparing. And, of course, we have to let Theron go soon so she could get to her post. But we are excited about VOT. Who's leading us in praise and worship today? Uh, praise and worship is the Gospel Inspires director, Roderick Giles, the one and only. The so one and the ready. only. Roderick VOT's is a bring blessing, y'all. Absolutely. And what, a, what else is VO, What is VOT singing? We're singing healing. We're singing a couple special things that you, for praise and work, that you've got to wait to see. She's not going to tell you, not so you have to stay you. tight. You got to keep tuned <laughs> you gotta in. stay tuned in. <laughs> you got to keep tuned <laughs> Absolutely, in. absolutely. So we want you to come on in. Uh, Pastor Wesley is closing out his Lenten series. That's what he said That's with part said. three. And let me tell you all, he blessed us. Oh, my goodness. At 8 a.m., and I can't preach the sermon. No way I can, so tune in. Tune tell in. your mama, tell your daddy, tell your friends That's right. to tune in and when because you look the at man of God is preaching. And look preaching. at it again and look at it again. Absolutely. Well, y'all, it's time to worship. Go. Thank you, and we'll see you next God time. God bless. Bye-bye. children processing in. God is so good as our church continues to grow. I, we have a special 
praise and worship leader today. He is the director of the Gospel Inspires at our church. We want to welcome Mr. Roderick Giles to be a, to lead us in praise and worship. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Alpha Street. Praise the Lord, Alpha Street. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So can I get y'all to do me a favor? Listen, if you, if you feel like it, can I get y'all to stand with us real quick? And we're going to put our hands together. And we're just going to lift up the name of Jesus with the song that says, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. That, is that your prayer this morning? Come on, put your hands together. If you got a yes in your spirit, I 
I want you to sing yes with us. Listen, we're going to turn into the Alpha Street Baptist Church Mass Choir. Here we go. One, two, three. Let me hear you sing. Blessing, blessing, blessing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now listen. Bring it a little bit. I know y'all probably already tired of me already. Y'all probably said, listen, I don't want him to move on. One more thing I want to do. Man, listen, we didn't go over this in rehearsal, y'all. Oh, just a little bit, Miss Johnson. All sopranos. I want you to say this for me. with us this morning. That's why we can sing hallelujah. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Anybody came to praise the name of Jesus this morning? Hallelujah. 
We give God our praise. We give God our worship. So, Father, we invite you into this place today. And we want to let you know, God, that we love you and that we appreciate you. And for that reason, we worship you and say hallelujah. We praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh Lord, we praise your name, all of the glory, and all of the praise, oh Lord, we praise your name. Come on, y'all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we give you glory this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. We praise your name. All of the glory. And all of the praise, oh Lord, we praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is that your prayer this morning? Hallelujah. That you want to give God the best praise that you can. Give God the best worship that you can. We praise your name, all of the glory, and we give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you. Oh, we give you the best. 
the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. How excellent is our God. Excellent in the morning, excellent all day long. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We've come to rejoice and be made glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. And his mercy endures through all generations. Our scripture reading is found in 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 through 12. And it reads, Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love is, was revealed amongst us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, since God loved us so much, we also are to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his divine word. We, have, we are now at the time of prayer. We have some of our family members who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Let us pray for Christina Weaver Jackson as she adjusts to the transition of her grandmother, Queen Weaver. Let us pray for Vincent Wilson and Angelique Mims as they adjust to the transition of their mother, Barbara Wilson. Let us pray for Cliff Dixon as he adjusts to the loss of his mother, Essie Dixon. Let us pray for Terry Pickney and Walena Hilliard as they adjust to the passing of their mother, Laura Harris. Let us be in prayer for Paula Goodwin as she adjusts to the transition of her niece, Sabrina Goodwin. Let us also be in prayer for Warren Sutton as he adjusts to the passing of his uncle, Jason Green. Let us be in prayer for Kathleen Wiggins as she adjusts to the transition of her mother, Sandra Harris. Let us also be in prayer for Deacon Sandrine Racundo as she adjusts to the passing of her father, Zephaniah Bilinigro. Bilinigro. Let us also pray for Eleanor Peck as she adjusts to the transition of her aunt, Cosetta Patterson Thomas. And finally, let us pray for Reverend Dr. Montrez Nicholson. She adjusts to the transition of her aunt, Rosa Nicholson Roundtree. I am sure that we have brought names in our hearts and in our minds, both in the sanctuary and our virtual congregation. Let us utter those names right now as we approach the throne of mercy. God who never changes. You are the God today, yesterday, and you will be forever. God, your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness unto us. God, we have some names that we have uttered that we need you to walk with these families, oh God. God, you know what they need. You know what they desire. So God, have your way. 
in their lives so that they can trust you more and depend on you more and love you more. God, we've come to this sanctuary with trials and tribulations today. God, we know that when we lay our trials and tribulations at your feet, you can handle them way better than we can. So God, do a miraculous thing in our lives, oh God. Show yourself mighty as you have in the past. God, we love you and we magnify your name. So spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon us today. God, throw your weight around in the sanctuary. Move like only you can so that we know that the transformative love of Jesus Christ will permeate our lives, oh God. God, we love you and we magnify your name. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray this prayer with thanksgiving and expectation. And let us all together say amen. amen. Let us remain standing as we sing our hymn of rejoicing at Calvary. Since your burdened soul found liberty, let us pass the peace one with another.
Good morning, Alfred Street. Morning. To the guests who grace us with the presence of God, with your presence and worship on today, grace and peace be unto each and every one of you from God who loves us as both mother and father, and Jesus Christ who always and alone is our resurrected, our risen, our reigning, and our returning redeemer. I hope I'm not the first one to say to you that this is another day that the Lord has made and how we gather to rejoice and to be glad in it. Listen, I pray you didn't come to church just to sit with a scowl on your face. If you got a bad attitude, you could have stayed at home. So if you might as well just rejoice. If you got up this morning, got dressed, made your way to the house of God by the grace of God, then join in with me as we make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves for we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Therefore, we will enter his gates with thanksgiving, walk into his courts with praise, be thankful unto him, and bless his name. Why? Because the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Is there anybody here who has tasted and seen how good God has been? Then come on, let's just rejoice. Let's put our hands together. Let's prepare to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Listen, I've never understood in my BC days, my before Christ days, why anybody would get dressed, go to a club, and just stand up on the wall. Amen. You know when you went there that you went there for a reason. I don't understand why people get dressed up, come to church on Sunday, and just sit and look mad about it. You knew what we was going to do when you walked in here. You knew there was going to be a little hand clap, and there was going to be some praise. Your neighbor was going to touch it two or three times. We were going to stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. We're going to shout a little bit. We're going to pray a little bit. We're going to lift our voices. You knew what you were going to get into when you came to Alpha Street Baptist Church. So go on and get in like you fit in, baby, and let's worship the Lord our God. Amen. Ooh-wee, if you wanted to be quiet, there are a whole lot of other churches I could have told you to go to today. Not today, devil. We've come to rejoice and to be glad. You know, sometimes you just got to tell yourself, be glad. Sometimes you have to remind yourself you have too much to be grateful for. To sit and not, I, I wouldn't come to worship if I didn't enjoy it. To go through all that to get in this space today. Amen. We always worship the Lord with reverence and also remembrance of the death, the resurrection, and the imminent return of Jesus Christ. 
we're making our way to Calvary and to the empty grave. And how important it is right now that we pause with all who accept and believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior to break bread and share cup. If that's the belief in your heart, then prayerfully when you came in, you received the elements of our Lord's Supper. If you did not, would you just simply wave a hand? Our deacons, our sisters and brothers who serve will be glad to share with you the bread and the cup that we have in this space. And those who are watching online, I want to invite and encourage you to take hold of whatever bread and cup you will use to remember this moment with us. I shared at 8 o'clock and want to repeat with you that this week I've been reflecting on the life of Jesus as he's made his way to Calvary. Imagine, if you would, knowing that the moment was finally here. You knew this was what God ordained. You knew this was what you were birthed for. But now it's time. Now it's time to face that God has called you to that which even Jesus says, if it were possible, let it pass for me. And the Bible says in those last moments before he died that he gathered his disciples together in an upper room. Theron often wonder why gather those 12 together. They couldn't stop the crucifixion. They couldn't deliver him from what he was going through. They couldn't even stay awake and pray with him. But maybe he gathered them together because Jesus knew what all of us know. That says, sometimes I just need you to sit with me. I just need you to be there with me. I, I don't need you to answer for God. I don't need you to pray that it wouldn't happen. I don't need you to come up with some miraculous theology. I just need to know you're there. Too often we try to explain that which we cannot understand. And we mess God up when God simply says, just sit and be present. There's something powerful about being connected to someone while they're going through what they're going through. And when we share communion, we remind ourselves that we are in community. That we never let anyone suffer alone. If, if you see me struggling, don't, don't just pray for me from a distance. Come grab my hand. If you know it's a rough season in my life, pick up the phone and call me. If you know I've just lost a loved one, stop by and sit. You, you don't have to tell me God knows. You just, just sit that we're community with one another. We bear one another's burdens. That's why we eat of this bread. The bread which represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus our Christ, crucified, dead, buried, resurrected, ascended, interceding, and one day returning. This we believe as we eat bread together. And in this cup is a memorial of the blood shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins and the redemption of our souls. For what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let us drink together. Pray with me, family. Lord, we receive through our faith what you offer in your amazing grace. The complete forgiveness of our sins, the eternal security of our soul's salvation, the precious indwelling of the Holy Spirit to live lives that are acceptable unto you, and the awesome opportunity and commission we have to share your transformative love with others as we make more disciples. You have forgiven us. Teach us to forgive one another. You've loved us. May we love each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we welcome you into the space today, as well as our family who's connected online, we recognize the presence of God, by the presence of life in this place. In just a little while, we're going to dedicate some children whom the Lord has seen fit to add to the families of Alpha Street. And as we pray for them, we recognize God is in our midst. It's a beautiful thing to hear crying children in church. Do me a favor. Don't ever make a mom or a dad feel embarrassed that their child is crying. 
Uh, amen if they are in church. That baby don't bother me crying. I'm going to shout too. So you are going to let them be, let them be, let them be. The Lord's in this place. We want to begin by recognizing our guest today. I want to thank uh, Dr. Ivory Berry, who's with us today. He's brought uh, the Washington alum chapter of Southern University to be with us on today. I'm going to ask all the Southern alums to stand as we thank God for their presence and worship with us on today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. We welcome you all to our worship on today. There may be some other guests. If you're not a member of our church, but you don't mind us recognizing you, we're going to ask all our guests who are comfortable, just put a hand in the air that we may thank God for you. If you've got a hand lifted next to you, won't you welcome them? Won't you welcome them today? We welcome you to our worship service. We recognize the gift of life in our birthdays. There may be someone today who's put another candle on the cake. If you're celebrating your recent birthday, won't you stand and allow us to celebrate with you all of our birthdays as they stand. Help me thank them. Thank God for them and their life on today. Happy birthday. All the babies. Amen. And finally, we also recognize the gift of love in our marriages. If we have any couples today who are celebrating another year of marriage, would you stand and remain standing that we may celebrate you? All of our couples who are celebrating, would you stand today? Amen. All right. Please remain standing. We do this because we love to shout out the years that you all are celebrating in your marriage together. I'm going to go way up in the back. Jerry, and how many of you all celebrating together? 32 years. Congratulations on your 32nd anniversary. 32. My brother and sister in the balcony, how many of you are celebrating? 50? Oh, 15. You got a long way to go to 50. Congratulations on your 15th anniversary. 10? I declare 15 in Jesus' name. I speak it. With a prophetic anointing, I declare, you shall see 15. Amen. Congratulations on your 10th anniversary. My brother and sister, how many years you are celebrating? You are. You're here in Florida. Five. I got that. Congratulations on your 5th anniversary. Okay. Before Mark, how many of you are celebrating? 29. Congratulations on your 29th anniversary. And then finally, how many years you are celebrating? 37, congratulations. Alpha Street, would you help me thank God for all the love of that which God has joined together? How we bless the Lord our God in thanksgiving for all of the new life, all of the uh, birthdays, all of the love anniversaries, and now we come to thank God for the gift of new life among us. What a joy it is. I was speaking with the pastor the other day. We said, Pastor, what's one of the greatest things you enjoy about belonging to Alpha Street? And I'll tell you, it's real simple seeing children grow up in our eyes. To have a child run up and hug me and remember when that child was in his or her mother's womb. To remember when we dedicated them, to see them accept Christ in their lives. To grow up and give their senior speeches and make their way off to college. For them to come back and be wearing paraphernalia of Cap Alpha Psi. It is... <laughs> There's no greater joy than watching children grow in our midst. Today we add to that list as we present those who we dedicate. In just a moment, uh, we're gonna call their names and they're gonna be brought forth by their parents. And at that time, we're also gonna ask all the family who are present with us to stand as we dedicate them, pray over them, anoint them with oil. Then one of the parents is just gonna lift them up before you. And I want you to be one of the first ones to Allow these children to feel what it means to be applauded, to be affirmed, and to be loved by a family of faith as we celebrate each and every one of them. We pray for you, moms and dads. The joy that you hold today, all of us who've been in your place know that that ebbs and flows. But the same joy you have will also be sometimes the pain of disappointment, the difficulty of decisions that must be made. And our prayer is that God will give you the strength to love in a new way. That your child will always know that no matter how prodigal the path of life may be, that there's always a place called home. That there's always a heart that is willing to forgive and to love. 
There's a reason we refer, refer to God as father and we refer to God even as mother. Because in mother and father, we're supposed to experience some of the love of God. I pray that in your title as mother and in your title as father, you would not ruin that child's perception of God. But more so recognize that God holds you accountable for how you train up your children. I want to encourage you to raise your children in the body of faith. Yes, it's important to go to school. Yes, it's important to bring out their creative, their cultural, their musical, their athletic skill. But don't neglect to bring out the Christ in them. To raise them in a family of faith where they are exposed in love and serve Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Families who gather with us today, we embrace the gift of children in our church. It's one of the highest priorities of our mission. We put it at the top of all that we do. We budget for it. We spend on it. Because there's nothing in the world like making an investment in a child and seeing them grow to become everything God has destined them to be. I want to encourage you to love them, to pray for them, to accept them, to acknowledge them, to affirm them, and to make certain that we become a church family that takes seriously raising a generation that loves Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for children. We thank you for these who you've brought safely into the lives and the homes the parents who love them now unconditionally, for the grandparents and aunts and uncles and godparents who gather today, Lord, surround them with the protection of prayer that no devil can destroy. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we speak against all molestation, any sexual violence. Lord, we speak against any, any teacher that will speak negativity over their life. Lord, we pray against any drug addiction and abuse. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would allow them to grow strong in spirit and in stature. That one day these children we pray for at the altar will witness in the waters of baptism. Lord, we thank you for them. We ask you now to keep to cover and protect them against all hurt, harm, and danger. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll ask all those who are here celebrating the life of Ezra Bradford Hales to please stand. I bless thee, Ezra Bradford Hales, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, amen. Master Ezra, church family, let's celebrate him today. Congratulations. Will all those who are here celebrating the life of Gabriel Quincy Conway please stand? I bless thee, Gabriel Quincy Conway. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Master Gabriel, church family. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, we've been waiting on this one. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I know this one. With all the family and friends of Jackson Don Garrett, please stand. I bless thee, Jackson Don Garrett, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Master Jackson family, as we thank God for him on today. Congratulations. Will all those who are here to thank God for the life of Logan Elizabeth Brown, please stand. Mm 
are gorgeous. I bless thee, Logan Elizabeth Brown, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Miss, Miss Logan family, amen. We want to see her. Yeah, lift that baby up. There we go. <laughs> there. Oh, yeah. Will all those who are here to celebrate and give thanks to life for Thomas Edward Dawson the fourth, please stand. I bless thee, Thomas Edward Dawson the fourth, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Master Thomas family. Some parents know ain't some fights ain't worth fighting, amen. Will all those here celebrate the life of Olivia Haley Sims, please stand. Turn her for me. I bless thee, Olivia Haley Sims. It's all right, mom, it's all right. Olivia Haley Sims, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, amen. Miss Olivia family. <laughs> the girl dad's in here, just pray, just pray, just pray. We ask all the family and friends of James Cash to please stand as we bless him today. I bless the... I, I bless thee, James Cash, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Master James family. Hey, congratulations. Will all the family and friends of Nicholas Mason White please stand? I bless thee, Nicholas Mason White, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, amen. Master Nicholson family, Master Nicholas. Yeah, let him, let, there you go. <laughs> Will all the family and friends of Kari Michelle Bumpers please stand? I bless thee, Kari Michelle Bumpers. Oh, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Miss Car Kari, everyone. Congratulations. Will the family and friends of Cameron Ellis Bentz please stand? I 
I bless thee, Cameron Ellis Bentz, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Master Cameron family. Look at those eyes. Oh, my God. Will the family and friends of Helen Grace Mead please stand? I bless thee, Helen Grace Mead, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Miss Helen family. <laughs> Alpha Street, would you help me thank God for all the life that we celebrate on today? Charles. Listen, I want to move quickly into service as the Lord has already given us so much to rejoice over. We're going to ask, as always, that you be generous and prayerful of what the Lord would place on your heart to give. We don't raise an official offering at Alfred Street. It's not because we don't believe in giving. It's not because we're not dependent upon it. We just believe that we are mature and grown enough in Christ to be thankful to God enough to give unto the Lord without needing an offering plate to be passed. You know all the online... Uh, uh, tech, uh, technology and platforms that are available for you. We're going to ask if you're watching online that you also join us in giving as the Lord move upon your heart to do so. Listen, a few quick things. We are in our Lenten season. We're making our way towards the cross of Calvary. I'm going to invite you to join in with us this Tuesday as we continue in our March Gladness series. Every Tuesday in March at 7 p.m. we gather for worship. Man, we've had a good time with John Faison and Marissa Farrell. And this week... If you can join us online, or even better, in this space, we welcome the Reverend R. Janae Pitts Murdoch, the uh, pastor of the Light of the World Christian Church in Indianapolis, Indiana, one of my closest friends in life and an anointed preacher. She will be here with us on Tuesday night. Won't you pray for her as she prepares to preach the Word of God? You know that next Sunday is Palm Sunday. At our 11 o'clock service, our children will present their Easter pageant. I want you to be present to help and affirm and to celebrate them as they come forth. You know, it's just a rite of passage to have to stand up and give your Easter speech. And so we're going to celebrate our children on next Sunday. Then we enter into Holy Week. We have our daily devotionals every day at noon. Um, our foot washing is on Thursday at 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. Our Good Friday service begins at noon as the sisters take us to the cross to remind us of the final sayings of Jesus before he died. And then on Easter Sunday, we have our 6 a.m. Easter morning worship at sunrise here at this church. And then at 11, we'll be at the Strathmore and the doors open at 10 o'clock. Lord, I thank you for all the things you enable us to do through your vision, through our volunteerism, through our giving. Lord, I pray now that as members of this space, as those who've been blessed in worship, that we will not only open up our hearts and to give, but that we'll lift up our church family in prayer, that we'll use the gifts you've given us of our hands and our time to help build your kingdom, that we'll pray, O oh Lord, for our leadership, that we will be good stewards of all that you've entrusted to our care. Thank you, O oh God, for all that we are able to give. May we do so with joy in Jesus' name. Amen.
thinking about two or three people. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Know that God is nigh. Know that God is nigh. If you have that faith, stand still and look up. Does anybody need a healing? There's healing for your sorrow. There's healing for your sorrow. Healing for your pain. Healing for your pain. There's healing. Healing for your spirit. There's even shelter from the rain. Cry out with the Lord in your healing. If you don't know nothing else, for this one thing I know. to worship God, to thank him for that healing. Somebody's been hurt by a, a close friend or a loved one. There's healing. The Bible says that God, he hung, bled, and died for us to have that healing. There's no problem too big for God. There's healing for
We thank you in advance for doing it, God. There's healing. Somebody's broken and needs to be made whole. There's healing, healing from the soul. thank Voices of Triumph for reminding us that wherever life may be hurting you, there's a balm in Gilead. If you don't know what that means, it simply means this, if you can have it, God can heal it. And whatever it is you may be walking through, God has a way of holding you together through it. God, I thank you for the balm of your word. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. In the name of Jesus, our Christ, we do pray. Amen. For those who may not have been with us for the past two weekends, we've been in a series trying to course correct contemporary Christianity. Siobhan, by reinserting the necessity of embracing some of the things Jesus actually said. The reason that's important is because in the world in which we live, there is a dangerous counterfeit Christianity brewing that quotes and interprets scripture without due consideration to how Jesus actually fulfilled scripture. If that was too complicated, here it is in a summary sense. The word of God is being used in ways that are not always aligned with the will of God. That there is a form of our faith that's heavy on the laws of Moses and the letters of Paul, but very light on the words of Jesus. And I want you to be cautious and careful of Anything that calls itself Christian that ain't got no verses written in red. Um, it, it's not only a problem today, it was a problem in the days of Jesus. That when Jesus comes on the scene, he realizes that there are some religious folks, some leaders who are quoting the word of God exactly, but not applying it correctly. And so in the midst of the Sermon on the Mount, we find that six times Jesus seeks to correct their misapplication of Scripture. When we read the Sermon on the Mount, you're going to find these six-fold repetition of the phrase, you've heard it said, but I say. And whenever you hear the phrase, you've heard it said, it is followed by Jesus lifting up a familiar passage of scripture that his audience knew well. Then Roger, when he says, but I say unto you, he is correcting how they misinterpreted and misapplied what the word said. We've had two parts so far. We looked at when Jesus lifts up that Old Testament commandment, thou shalt not kill. It says, but this is a lot more than just homicide and premeditated murder. This is about the danger of calling yourself a Christian and not knowing how to control your anger. It's about the hypocrisy of saying you are right with God, but make no effort to be reconciled to people you've offended. That there's some counterfeit about your worship if you live your life Monday through Saturday without any fear of the imminent judgment of God who watches all that you say and do. 
They didn't like that one. And the next one was even worse. When Jesus lifted up that Old Testament commandment, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. He said, but I say unto you, turn the other cheek. And last week we took some time to unravel <laughs> what is arguably one of the misunder most misunderstood teachings of Jesus Christ about what it means to turn the other cheek. Well, today as we end this series and get ready to go to Palm Sunday and Resurrection Sunday, I want to invite you back one more time to the Sermon on the Mount. We've been hanging out in Matthew chapter 5. Let's go back there to this last you've heard it said of Jesus. Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse number 43, and today I want to read out of the New Revised Standard Version, the updated edition. It's our custom to ask those who are physically able to stand that together we may reverence the reading of the word of the Lord. Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse number 43. It will be on the screens for those who may not have Bible in hand. Here it goes again. You've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For God makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. H hear me, if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you only greet your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than anybody else? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Do me a favor, nudge your neighbor and tell them that's what he said. That's what he said. Um, Jesus has already given us the challenge to not be controlled by anger. He's raised the bar by telling us to turn the other cheek. But now it seems as if he's left the best and the hardest for last. He shares a word with that audience gathered in the Sermon on the Mount that we desperately need to hear today. Love your enemies. Jesus says to them, you've heard it said, love your enemies. Excuse me, you've heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. Deacon Russell, when he lifts that up, he realizes that that is a passage of scripture that his audience was familiar with. They went around telling each other, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. They believed that if they checked the box of loving their neighbor, they were then given divine permission to hate their enemy. You know why? Because, Tia, that's what the Bible says. The Bible says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That's what they were telling themselves. That's how they condoned hating their enemies because they believed that they heard it in Scripture because that's what someone told them. The problem is that that's not what Scripture says. Can I teach Bible for a little bit? Jesus says, you've heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. And remember, whenever Jesus says, you've heard it said, he then lifts up a passage of scripture that his audience was familiar with. This passage comes from Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. 
When you go home and you read Leviticus 19, 18, you're going to find out what it really says is love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> Judy, there's nowhere in that passage that says, and hate your enemy. You've heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Leviticus 19, 18 literally says, love your neighbor as yourself. Ain't no hate your enemy in that passage. So what you ought to be asking is, where it come from? If, if, if the scripture that they were quoting did not say hate your enemy, where did it come from? I'm glad you asked. It's rooted in Psalm 5, verse 5. When you go home and you read Psalm 5, verse 5, it says this, God hates evildoers. So what they've done, want to make sure you catch this, they've taken Leviticus 19, 18, cut it in half, gone to Psalm 5, rephrased and remixed it, and put Leviticus 19.18 with a paraphrase of Psalm 5 and have now created a scripture that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. I want to make certain you catch what's happening. They've chopped up one scripture, stretched the words of another scripture, and added two scriptures together that don't go together and talking about what the Bible said. So don't you miss this. It's a law and a psalm put together. It's half of one verse with a paraphrase of another verse put together. It's an edited version with a remixed version put together. It's R&B with a Western trying to make it sound right. They've blended some stuff that don't go together and come out saying, love your neighbor and hate your enemy because that's what the Bible says. Beloved, I've been trying to tell you for 15 years, I want you to read your Bible. Because there's a whole lot of stuff that sounds true but may not actually be in Bible. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, this too shall pass. That sounds good. But that ain't nowhere in Scripture. God will never put more on you than you can. God, I wish that were true. But that ain't nowhere in Bible. Here's what I know I'm going to get you. The race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but to... That ain't nowhere in Bible. <laughs> what it says is the race is not to the swift, the battle to the strong, but time and chance happens to everyone. There's nowhere in Bible that says, but to those who endure to the end. The reason I want you to know that is because there will always be those who try to convince and condone that something is of Bible that ain't actually in Bible. When you chop and mix and remix and paraphrase and combine, you can make the Bible say whatever you want it to say. And you may not know this, but there are those in the world who are proficient at taking Scripture out of context. There are those who are good at telling you what verse 17 said but won't read verse 16. There are a lot of folk that are real good at paraphrasing and stretching and distorting what the Word of God actually says so they can have a scripture and a verse to back up their politic and their ideology. It is when you mix and paraphrase and cut and chop and remix and combine that you wind up with the basis of hypocrisy in Christianity. 
When you cut and chop and edit and mix, that's how you can catch a man and a woman in the act of adultery, but only bring the woman to be stoned because you cut off the part that said the brother ought to be stoned. When you take scripture out of context, you can keep women out the pulpit. When you mix Leviticus and Romans, you can oppress queer in your sanctuary. When you stretch the word foreigner, you can shut your borders to the immigrant. When you don't know how to handle the word, of God correctly. And so Jesus shows up to challenge their dissonant combining of Scripture. He said, you thought the Bible said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. I come to tell you, love your enemy. What Jesus says here is unparalleled in any pagan or ancient religion. This is the first time the world has heard this commandment that you need to love your enemy. And how desperately we need to hear it today. Because hate is so easy. Demonizing folk is so easy. Saying that group is going to hell is so easy. Weaponizing scripture against people is so easy. Masking your fear of something by telling other folk God told you to hate it is so easy. And what I am afraid of is that there is a segment of Christianity calling itself evangelical, calling itself conservative, calling itself right-wing, calling itself nationalist that has embraced the rhetoric of hate. And be careful because they mask it with stuff that's meant to fool you. This is what they say, well, we love the sinner, but we hate the sin. You ever heard that? Well, well I would challenge your definition of love because your definition of love looks a whole lot like hate. Um, you have the right to hate abortion. Yes, you do. You have the right to stand against it, and if you don't believe in abortion, don't have one. But when you start passing laws that limit adequate health care to women who've been raped, women who've been molested, women whose pregnancy threatens their health, don't tell me you love them if you're willing to let them die. What does love look like? When Jesus says, love your enemy, what does that look like? Hear me, Stephanie. It's not Jesus saying, I want you to have a warm, fuzzy feeling about your enemies. Jesus is not saying, I need you to go to CVS and get them a Hallmark card and tell them how much you love them. Because love, beloved, is not a feeling. Love, in one of my favorite authors, love is an act you do. Listen, can I help some young single folks? Stop falling for someone who says they love you in their feelings but never show you in their actions because love is not how you feel about me. Love is how you decide to treat me. Love is a deliberate decision that I'm going to treat you differently than I treat everybody else because love ain't what you say. Love is what you... And may might I suggest to you that the truest test of our love of God is not how we feel about God. It's what we do with one another. Jesus says, listen, here's what it is. I want you to love your enemies 
and let me show you what Jesus' love looks like. Jesus' love, it, it, it starts with recognizing the commonality you have with your enemy. The first step of love is recognizing that you have a connection of commonality. Go on, teach Howard John. Uh, um, um, when you go home, I want you to read Matthew chapter 22. In Matthew chapter 22, an expert in the laws of Israel comes to Jesus and wants to challenge Jesus. And he says to Jesus, hey, of the 631 laws, which one is the greatest? She said, oh, I got that. Uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart. He said, but wait, and there's a second one. And love your neighbor as yourself. He quotes Leviticus 19.18 again. And it's what he says. That's the second greatest commandment in all the Bible. Israel knew it. The Jews knew they were commanded to love their neighbor. Loving their neighbor was not their problem. Melissa Crothy, their problem was their definition of neighbor. They didn't have any problem loving folk. They had a problem expanding the definition of neighbor. We go back and read Leviticus 19 in your devotional time. Don Dorindo, you're going to find out that they define neighbor as their own kin. Neighbor were people that believed what they believed. Neighbor were the folk that went to the same synagogue. They, neighbor were the folk that looked just like they did. Neighbor were the folk that read the Bible the same way they did. And let me tell you, love is easy when your definition of neighbor is small. Love is easy when people whose pronouns don't match yours ain't your neighbor. Love is easy when folk who don't vote like you ain't your neighbor. Love is easy when folk whose income doesn't match yours in your neighbor. Love is real easy when you've got a narrow definition of who you need to love. Beloved, can I tell you what got Jesus in trouble? What got Jesus in trouble with the Jews was that he had the audacity to expand the definition of neighbor, of who you need to love. I wish I had a Bible reader uh, that remembers the parable of the Good Samaritan. Uh, if you don't remember it, in Luke chapter 10, another expert of the law comes to Jesus, and he's trying to get into heaven, and he asks Jesus, what do I need to do? Jesus said, it's simple. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. And then the brother pushes back on Jesus and says, well, who's my neighbor? Who do I have to love? Who falls in the circle of those I have to honor and respect and protect and do right by? And Jesus messed up his ministry by suggesting that Samaritans who y'all hate are actually your neighbors because God is expanding your understanding of your neighbor. I came by to ask you a question. Who's your neighbor? Who do you think you have to limit being kind to? Who do you feel you're justified not speaking to? What group of folk are you under no divine obligation to be loving to? Who doesn't deserve equal protection under the law? Who's guilty until proven innocent? Who is your neighbor? Can I push this? 
Well, I feel like preaching. Uh, you need to understand what the word neighbor means. The word neighbor is this Greek term, plesion, which is rooted in a, a word called pelas, P-E-L-A-S, and pelas literally means near. So, Roger Giles, your neighbor is someone who's near to you. Your neighbor is someone who you share something in common with. Your neighbor is not limited to residential proximity. Neighbor is not simply I live in 301, you live in 303. Neighbor literally means we share something in common. So we can be national neighbors because we share America in common. We can be ethnic neighbors, because we have a commonality in our African ancestry. We can be political neighbors because we vote the same way. We can be economic neighbors because there's a commonality of our income. Neighbor simply means you have something in common. And here's where the teaching of Jesus gets controversial. Jesus says the very first way to begin loving your enemy is to recognize that your enemy is really your neighbor. That you and your enemy have more in common than you recognize. Okay, y'all, it's slow at 8 o'clock. Um, <laughs> you all know the ACC tournament was in D.C. this week. And one of our corporate partners, and being kind to the pastor, Invited me to the suite to come watch the ACC tournament because they know I'm a Duke fan. I, no, I'm sorry. I'm a Duke alum. Someone asked me, did you go to Duke? No, I graduated from Duke. Um, I, nah, nah, listen, listen, I, know, I know HBCU, so I, I know y'all, but, but let me be the Duke for a minute. Let me be proud. Because uh, one thing I don't play about is Duke basketball. Ooh, we. I look, I am don't test my Duke Blue. I love me some blue devils. It's the only devil God likes is a blue one. I'm all in on Duke. You it's January, February, Duke, April, May. March belongs to us. I, I'm all in. They they know I bleed Duke Blue. They invited me to the suite, Paul, to come watch the game. So I get my oldest son. He's home from spring break. We put on our Duke gear, and we go down uh, to the Capital One Arena to watch Duke play. When I get up in the suite, I'm slightly offended because there are a bunch of Carolina fans up there. Now, now you know I don't mess with no Carolina. I, that is the ugliest shade of blue God has ever seen. I don't mess with no Tar Heels. I do not care for Carolina. Clearly, they're not the smartest folk in the world. I don't like Carolina. I don't mess with nobody that went with UNC. So I get up in there. I'm wearing my Duke gear. And there are all these Carolina fans wearing that ugly blue standing together. I look around them, and over there are a bunch of Duke fans wearing Duke jerseys. So I go around the Carolina folk. I don't know anybody in that Duke circle, but they got on Duke jerseys. <laughs> Ain't never met none of them. But we have a commonality, because we all cheering for Duke. So I'm sitting over there talking to my Duke folk, meeting them, greeting them, because we have stuff in common. I ain't messing with Carolina over there. So glad they lost last night, because I'm petty like that. Oh, God. I'm petty with a capital P. So the suite is nice. They, they've got, they got food. And you need to know, uh, if it's free, it's for me. So, so I go get in line to get some food. 
when I get in line, a brother wearing a Carolina jersey comes and stands right behind me. First time I believe in segregation. This is for Duke only. You, I, and I'm just looking at him, and he's looking at me. I'm looking at him, he's looking at me. You, you ever seen someone look at you too long and you will go, what? <laughs> he keep looking at me. This is what he said. You ain't going to speak, Pastor? be nice to him because I realized we have something in common even though I thought he was my enemy there's a commonality can I tell you what you have in common with everyone you think is your enemy we're all sinners saved by grace oh I need someone to hear that no matter how different we are, we're both some low-down sinners. You may be pro this, and I may be anti that, but we're both still sinners. You may be Republican, I may be Democrat, but we're both still sinners. You may live up here, and I may live down there, but we are both sinners. And I found out the only way you can hate somebody is if you lie to yourself about yourself that somehow you think you're better than somebody else. Ooh, wait. I'm looking for some folk that can be honest for just about five seconds and declare that I am a sinner. I may look Sunday, but I'm a sinner. I may walk holy, but I'm a sinner. Are there any saved sinners in the house? If you're standing up, look at somebody and just do this. Uh, we got something in common. We are both sinners. How can you hate someone when y'all got so much in common? Here's what the Lord says, so... That co-worker that you think is your enemy, just remind yourself that you're as broken as she is. You're as low down as she is. Whatever she's done, you've done it too. He said, love your enemies. Oh, but then here come the one I don't like. And pray for them who persecute. Pray for them. Pray for them. Now, you're Sunday sanctified, so, so I'm going to testify on your behalf. That's a lot easier said than done. Can I teach the Bible real cute? Uh, Jesus says, pray for them that persecute you. The word persecute is this Greek word, dioko. And dioko literally means to pursue. It means to run after. It means to hunt down. A persecutor is one who don't know how to let it go. A persecutor is one who keeps on coming. Persecutor is one that you tried to just walk away and they followed you out the room. Persecutor is one you gave warning and say, look, hey, I'm trying to tell you, don't push me no more again and they push you one more. You, you ever had a persecutor? You know what a persecutor is? Persecutor is someone who when you realize you've done wrong, and you go to them to apologize, they take your sincerity as an opportunity to be mean. You, you trying to put out a peace offering, and they think that means you're weak, and now they just gonna cuss you down. You, you ever had a persecutor? 
Let me say something. You may not have, but I have. I've had some enemies who didn't know how to let it go. I've had some folk that took it where it didn't need to go. I've had some folk that talked to other folk, some things other folk didn't need to know nothing about about me. I had some folk I tried to call and apologize, and they just took it as an opportunity to increase their ugly. Have you ever dealt with a persecutor? And in that moment, the last thing I wanted to do was pray for them. Hold on. I can pray about you all day long. <laughs> I can tell Jesus everything about you. God, you know she ain't no good. God, you know that brother was out of here. God, you know that they were wrong for what they did. But Jesus does not say pray about them. Pray for them. You know what that sounds like? Go a little something like this. God, bless her. God, whatever's broken, fix it. God, open a door for him that he didn't even know he could walk through. God, prepare a table for her in the presence of our enemies. God, hear her prayer and go exceeding and abundantly above. I'm praying for you when I want God to bless you. Someone, I know you didn't want to hear that this morning. One of the first steps of love is learning to pray for somebody. Because you know what? It's hard to hate someone you pray for. It's hard to be jealous of someone you pray for. It, it, it's hard to be nasty to folk you pray for. It's hard to talk evil about folk you pray for. Because what you pray for, when God does it, you have to accept that's what you prayed for. Okay, y'all feel me? Um, you know I love to eat, and I love to teach my children about dining. So we take them out, take them out to restaurants all the time. Because there's nothing worse than a misbehaved child that doesn't know how to act at a restaurant. Train up your children. <laughs> we, I remember the first time I took the boys to a steakhouse, and... Explain to them the different cuts of meat between a strip steak, a ribeye, and a filet mignon, because the, the, the real difference, in case y'all notice, is how much fat is in each one, and, and there's different flavor. So filet mignon is tender, but because it ain't have no fat, it ain't got no flavor. Now, ribeye ain't no good for you, but it tastes better because it's got all the fat in it. <laughs> uh, uh, somebody say strip steak, you got land in the middle. You got land in the middle. So I'm not only teaching my sons about different cuts of steak, I'm teaching them about how to order the steak correctly. Because what you really want to do is order your steak at medium rare, which is about 125 to 130, and then let it rest 10 minutes, and it'll come up to medium. Now, I know some of y'all, because they think colored folk only like well-done meat. And so, uh, so some of y'all like 150, 160, where the meat is just brown. That, that's not how you're supposed to order a steak. They might as well give you a piece of boot and put some A1 on it, because you don't know the difference. I'm trying to taught y'all something. Uh, you got to order your steak medium at best. So we sit down at the table, and Cooper decides he wants a filet mignon. I said, all right, son, but know this. There's no fat in a filet mignon. It is tender, but it has no flavor. He says, well, I want it like grandma. I want it well done. I said, no, you do not. He said, yes, I do. Grandma gets her steak well done. I want it. Well, son, you do not want a filet mignon well done. You are not going to like it. The waitress comes and asks what he wants. He said, give me filet mignon well done. I said, all right. They brought out the filet mignon when it was well done. He cut into it. I could not stand the way it looked. I looked at it. It was dry. It was brown. He cut it and took a bite of it and spit it out on his plate and said, daddy, this is nasty. I don't like it. I said, well, son, too bad because that's what you asked for. And when you asked for it and it was brought, you ain't got no chance but to enjoy it because that's what you asked for. Ooh, somebody that just went right over your head. The reason you ought to pray for your enemy 
It's so that when God answers it and God brings the blessing and God brings the door open and God brings the healing, God looks at you and says, that's what you asked for. You asked for them to be blessed. You asked for me to make a way. You asked for me to move a mountain. You asked for me. And when God delivers, all you can do is say thank you. Can I push it? But the word persecutor means they keep coming. Which means this, I can't promise you that praying for them will change them. Come, come here, I don't want you to be frustrated and come back next Sunday tell me you've been praying for your co-worker and she ain't changed. <laughs> praying for them may not change them because prayer does not always change what you're dealing with. Prayer changes how you handle it. Prayer may not change the storm, but prayer will give you strength to live through it. Prayer may not change her attitude, but prayer will give you the power to say good morning anyhow. Prayer will give you the strength to deal with what may not change. I wish I had about three witnesses and I'll make number four that can declare I prayed about it and it may not have changed, but God gave me the strength to deal with it. Because when you pray, you are putting whatever you pray about in God's hands. Oh, can I give you prayer 101? You know what prayer really is? Prayer is going to God and saying, here. It, it ain't more complicated than that. Prayer is going to God with a burden and saying, here. Prayer is going to God with some trouble and saying, here. Prayer is going to God with some sickness in your body and saying, here. Prayer is going to God with some financial trouble and saying here. Prayer is going to God with something you can't handle and saying and when you put it in God's hands watch how God will turn that thing around. Can I help somebody? When you put your enemy in God's hands, God will use them for a footstool to elevate you in life. When you put them in God's hands, the one who hated you has to hold the door open for you. When God blesses you, is there anybody here who's seen God use your enemy to bless your life? Somebody holler here. I got to go. Uh, it's time for Sunday school. Uh, uh, he said, love your enemies because your enemy is really your neighbor. Pray for them that persecute you and just put them in God's hands. Oh, but then there's one more commandment he gives there, and then this one messes me up. Jesus says, and be perfect because God is perfect. Oh, oh, this cannot mean what I think it means. Carlin McAlpine, if Jesus is saying I need to be perfect, I'm in a whole lot of trouble. If perfect means without fault or flaw, God, I ain't going to make it. If perfect means to never mess up again, God, I ain't going to make it. Why would Jesus seemingly command us to do the impossible? Lord, why tell me to be perfect? You and I both know. That's not possible. At my best, I'm still messed up. 
on Sunday in church from 8 to 9.30, I still have some stuff run through my mind that shouldn't run through my mind. What does it mean to be perfect? I'm so glad you asked because I, I had to look it up because I, I was about to quit my faith. Um, <laughs> perfect is this term teleos. And teleos doesn't mean flawless. It means complete. It means whole. It means finished. When Jesus is hanging on the cross and he's about to breathe his last, the last word he says before he dies, teleos, it is finished. It is perfected. The work is done. When Jesus tells us to be perfect, it does not mean that we can no longer mess up. It means to realize that in God, it's already finished. In God, it's already complete. In God, it's already handled. I don't know who I came to deliver today, but God wants you to know whatever your enemy is doing, she or he cannot stop what God has started. Your enemy cannot destroy what God has ordained. Your enemy cannot destroy what God has laid his hands on. I came to declare to somebody, it is finished. For he who has begun a good thing will perform it until the day of the coming of Christ Jesus. Stop letting petty folk mess your day up. Stop letting a co-worker not speak to you mess your day up. Stop letting your enemy roll their eyes mess your day up. Whenever you see your enemy, think about what God has already done and compare it to what they're trying to do. And when I think of what God has already done and the ways he's made and the doors he's opened and the blessings he's given, Somebody say, be perfect. Be complete. But you know what else I like about the word perfect? I found out that to be perfect, <laughs> Zena, it is not an expectation. It is an invitation. It's not Jesus saying, you can't mess up. It's an invitation for you to participate in the nature of God. Be perfect as God is perfect. It's an invitation for you and I to allow the nature of God to rest inside of us so that when folk deal with us, they get a little bit of God. What an invitation to be part of what God is doing. What a glorious invitation to be part of God's work on the earth. What a glorious invitation to mirror what God is up to. The Bible says that God causes it to rain on the just and the unjust. God causes the sun to rise on the righteous and the unrighteous. That God doesn't change who God is simply because somebody ain't who they're supposed to be. God says, if you're unrighteous, I'll still make the sun rise. If you're evil, I'll still give you nourishing rain. And I thank God that God is kind to the unrighteous, that God is merciful to the sinner, that God is compassionate to the wicked, that God is gracious to the sinful. You ought to shout right there because every now and then, I'm the unrighteous. I'm the sinner. I'm the unrepentant. I'm the broken. And thanks be to God that he's the same with me when I'm not righteous as he is when I am. Thank God that he blesses me when I don't deserve it. Thank God that he hears prayer when I don't deserve it. Thank God that he made a way when I didn't go to church. Is there anybody here that knows that God was good 
when I didn't deserve it. He made a way when I didn't deserve it. I gotta go. I gotta go. Be perfect means to be complete. Be perfect means to act like God. But I love it because that phrase, be perfect. Theron, it's in the future tense. The future tense means that I may not be there right now. But if God gives me another day, I'll make another step. And when I get another day, I'll make another step. I may not be perfect now, but baby girl, I'm making progress. And every now and then, you ought to praise God, not for perfection, but for progress. Is there anybody here that can just thank God that I made some progress? I'm not what I used to be. I don't cuss like I used to cuss. I don't slap folk like I used to. And I thank God for some progress. Can I pause right here and ask for a progress praise? Thank God I've come a long way. Thank God I don't do what I used to do. Thank God. Tell somebody, tell them I'm making it. I'm not there yet. But I'm making it. Judge me by what I am right now. But if God give me one more day, if God give me another chance, the old saints used to say, please be patient with me because God is not through with me yet. But when God, when God, when God gets through with me, I shall, I shall, I shall come forth as pure gold. Hey! Be perfect. Be perfect. Come on, let's stand. We don't want to delay. Be perfect is an invitation to be more than what you are right now. And here's what I found out about the grace of God. God would never invite you to something you can't do. Which means you can progress. You can grow. You can change. You don't have to remain the same. It's an invitation to come unto the gracious nature of God. To leave behind what you have been. And say yes to what God is calling you to be. As our deacons come to the altar today, I want to extend that invitation to you. With no expectation that you're going to be perfect. Do me a favor, stop expecting folk to be perfect simply because they go to church. Can you do me a favor? Can you give me room to progress? Can you give me the gracious space to grow? Can you give me the opportunity to respond daily to the Lord creating something new in me? That's what church is, my brother. That's what church is, my sister. So today, if you, if you hear that invitation for you to grow, to change, to be perfect, this is your opportunity. It's real simple. So I just want you to come from wherever you may be standing to come down and say, God's calling me today. I feel the invitation is for me to become part of a church where perfection is not the goal, but progress is our daily life. If you're here today and you're ready to give your life to the Lord, if you're ready to stop being a guest and you're ready to start being a member, we want to encourage you, do me a favor, just move from wherever you will. Tell your neighbor, excuse me, God's calling me. Forgive me, I got to get down to the altar while I have time. Won't you come, my brother? Won't you come, my sister? Today is the day of salvation. Is there one today 
We'll wait for you if you're in the balcony or the overflow. Today is the day. The door of the church is open. Harden not your heart. He's waiting with open arms. Would you come today? No greater love. Bless you, my brother. Bless you. Confess and believe. Now you don't have to be the first or the only one. Won't you come? Come on, one last time. Today is the day. Harden not your heart. He, listen, if you're online, you can accept this invitation right now. Go to our website. Take a moment to fill out our new member form. Allow us to reach out to you even today. Do it even now. Make up your mind. Confess and believe. You may be seated, beloved. Confess and believe. Amazing God who invites us to participate in who you are, to be perfect as you are. We thank you today not only for our brother who's made this confession, but all those who line, Lord, who are also joining in this moment. It is our prayer that we would expose them to the amazing gift of grace and love in Jesus Christ. And then this church family, we will watch them progress and celebrate every day that you make a change in their life. Lord, thank you for their commitment. Thank you for his connection. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. My brother, we welcome you to the Alpha Street Baptist Church on today. Would you help me celebrate him on this morning? Deacon Barbrand is going to take you to our reception room where we're going to share with you the next steps of awaiting you. Oh, good Kappa man, too. Praise the Lord our God. A amen, amen. Take him to the VIP room, the VIP. <laughs> Beloved, as we get ready to leave this place, do me a favor. Join us Tuesday night in person or online at 7 p.m. as we receive the Reverend Dr. Janae Pitts Murdoch to share with us the word of God in our March Gladness series. And then please don't let the sun go down today without being obedient to whatever God will place on your heart in prayer to give as we generously support the work of the kingdom of Christ here at the Alpha Street Baptist Church, the Lord's Church. We're getting relieved now in the voices of triumph who bless us in our final selection. And then we go out to live the word of God as we change the world in which we live. And now, to the Almighty and the All-Wise, the Eternal and the Sovereign, the Faithful and Omnipotent God, who alone is Creator of both heaven and earth, to the God who's made himself perfectly known to us, and Jesus, who alone and always is our Christ, our loving Lord, our sacrificial Savior, our resurrected, risen, reigning, returning Redeemer, 
to the God who chooses to dwell on these earthen vessels of clay through the sustaining power, promise, presence, purpose, and person of the Holy Spirit. To that all wise God be both glory and majesty, dominion and power from now until eternity. And the redeemed of the Lord who loved the Lord and awaited his return said amen. Amen. Go in the grace of God and may the grace of God go with you. What's up, Alpha Street family? Welcome to our online worship experience. Thank you for joining us as we continue to celebrate this season of Lent. Happy Women's History Month. I'm Charnel King, social media manager. Let's get into our weekly announcements. Let's talk about March gladness. Reverend Marissa R. Farrell preached a word for us. To catch the full sermon, check out our YouTube channel. On March 19th at 7 p.m., we can't wait to welcome Reverend R. Janae Pitts Murdoch. Remember, this is every Tuesday at 7 p.m. during the month of March. Make sure to join us in person or online to hear and witness some powerful messages of faith. Palm Sunday is right around the corner. It marks the start of Holy Week. On March 24th at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m., please join us for an amazing Palm Sunday worship experience where our youth will lead us in praise and worship and the Easter pageant. We can't wait. There's so many wonderful events happening during Holy Week. Let's talk about it. We want to invite everyone to join us for Holy Week devotionals. It all kicks off on Monday, March 25th with Minister Otis Bird Jr. at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We can't wait for you to join us for the foot washing experience on Thursday, March 28th at 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. in the multi-purpose room. On Good Friday, Sisters at the Cross starts at 12 p.m. on Friday, March 29th. For more information, please visit alphastreet.org. Our sunrise service kicks off on Sunday, March 31st at 6 a.m. And we can't wait to see you at 11 a.m. for our Easter worship service at the Strathmore in Bethesda, Maryland. Doors do open at 10 a.m. Let's stay connected. Make sure you're following along at Alpha Street BC on all social platforms. And you can find us now on TikTok. Now here are the remaining upcoming announcements for this week. Thanks, Charnel. Welcome to Alfred Street's worship experience. On this third Sunday, we celebrate with our baby dedications, especially with March being Parent Awareness Month. Please visit our Office of Christian Care and Counseling webpage for more information on International Parent Awareness and National Single Parent Day on March 21st via our website and social media platforms. Now, here are the upcoming announcements for this week. We know that these are difficult and challenging times. We invite you to stay connected by participating in our online worship services and remain faithful in your giving online via our Alfred Street website, ASBC app, and on our text messaging system. Everyone, please be sure to scan the QR code with your phone, which will take you directly to our giving page on our website. If you have any questions about giving, please feel free to email our finance department at finance at alfredstreet.org. If you're interested in becoming a member of the historic Alfred Street Baptist Church, please email deacons with an S at alfredstreet.org or complete the membership form on our website or on our ASBC app. Our daily prayer call was a huge success during Seek 2024. Thanks in part to all of you. As a result, we'll resume our daily prayer call starting on Monday, February 26th at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. However, we will continue to utilize the Zoom platform that we've used during Seek 2024. Please visit our website, social media platforms, and or e-blast for additional information. 
DMV. Get ready. Join us in person and or online at the historic Alfred Street Baptist Church, home to the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley. You don't want to miss our electrifying 2024 March Gladness Spring Revival happening every Tuesday at 7 p.m. throughout the month of March. Alfred Street's 2024 Spring Revival features some of the most dynamic speakers in the nation. Alfred Street welcomes the incredible Reverend Dr. R. Janae Pitts Murdoch of the Light of the World Christian Church in Indianapolis, Indiana. Doors open at 6 p.m. and the revival experience starts at 7 p.m. If you want to be rejuvenated and revived, join us at Alfred Street Baptist Church, 301 South Alfred Street in Alexandria, Virginia on Tuesday, March 19th at 7 p.m. for our 2024 March Gladness Spring Revival. Visit alfredstreet.org for more details. That's alfredstreet.org. We invite everyone to download your free copy of the ASBC 2024 Lenten Devotional Brochure. It's now available online via our website. We love our Alfred Street kids. Get ready for the 2024 Children's Easter Pageant entitled, I Was There, written by our very own Reverend Marla C. Hawkins. This will all take place in person and live stream on Sunday, March 24th on our YouTube channel and Facebook Live during our 11 a.m. Palm Sunday worship experience. Join us and the Kid Street Ministry to see and hear about Jesus from our kids. Alfred Street would like to invite everyone to join us online and or in person during Holy Week, March 25th through March 29th. Our Holy Week midday devotionals will commence on Monday, March 25th at 12 p.m. noon Eastern Time with Minister Otis Byrd Jr. On Tuesday, March 26th, Minister Paul Hippolyte. And on Wednesday, March 27th is Minister Errol Moore. And closing out the midday devotionals will be Minister Andrea Pippins. Attention Alpha Street family and friends, we want to invite everyone to attend our foot washing experience in person at Alpha Street Baptist Church on Monday, Thursday, March 28th at 1 p.m. immediately following our noon meditations and again at 6 p.m. in the evening. No registration needed. Just show up. Alfred Street family and friends tell everyone you know to meet you at Alfred Street Baptist Church on March 29th, Good Friday at 12 p.m. noon Eastern Time. Come out and experience in person and or online the Sisters at the Cross. Seven dynamic women of the gospel will deliver the seven last words of Jesus Christ in the most unique way. You definitely want to be in the sanctuary to experience these seven powerful women. They are as follows. The first word will be given by Reverend Marla C. Hawkins. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke 23, 34. The second word will be delivered by Reverend Dr. Zena Jacques. Surely I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. Luke 23, 43. The third word will be presented by Reverend Marcia Norfleet. Woman, behold thy son, behold your mother. John 19, 26 and 27. The fourth word will be given by Reverend Dr. Latasha Morgan. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27 and 46. The fifth word will be delivered by Reverend Dr. Rosalind M. Brock. I thirst. John 19, 28. The sixth word will be brought to you by Minister Jessica Anderson. It is finished. John 19, 30. And finally, the seventh word will be given by Reverend Dr. Siobhan Arline Bradley. Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Luke 23, 46. This will be an amazing worship experience. We look forward to seeing everyone in the sanctuary and or online on Good Friday, March 29th at 12 p.m. noon. Alfred Street family, be sure to make plans now to worship with us online and or in person on Palm Sunday on March 24th at 8 and 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We will be distributing palms on Palm Sunday as well. Please come out and support our Kid Street Easter worship experience on Palm Sunday as well on March 24th during the 11 a.m. worship service. We look forward to seeing you there. We also invite everyone to join us live in person at 6 a.m. Eastern Time for our annual Easter Sunrise Worship Experience. It'll all take place in the sanctuary at Alfred Street Baptist Church, located at 301 South Alfred Street in Alexandria, Virginia, on Resurrection Sunday, March 31st. Again, that's 6 a.m. Eastern Time. Holy Week will culminate with our Easter Sunday Resurrection Services on March 31st, which will again be held at the Music Center at Strathmore in North Bethesda, Maryland. 
We encourage you to please visit our alfredstreet.org website to view the entire 2024 Holy Week schedule and list of events, as well as any additional information related to Holy Week and Easter. Alfred Street Baptist Church Community. From the Office of Christian Care and Counseling, Rev. Dr. Latasha Morgan, LPC, March Awareness is about parents and parenting. Parenting is a journey that lasts a lifetime. Families are the most important institution, the most important resource in a child's life. As parents, our role is essential in shaping the well-being of our children. Every parent wants to be a good parent. And I'm sure you've asked yourself many times, what is the blueprint for being a parent? How am I supposed to do this? As Christians, there's really only one blueprint for how to live our lives, and this blueprint includes how to parent our children. The blueprint is the Bible. The Bible expresses roles, realities, and responsibilities of parents. Jesus shares with us the principles he asks of his followers, and these apply to parenting as well. We should follow God's example of what it means to love his children. Check out this month's article, Parenting, Is There a Blueprint? by Michelle Johnson, ASBC Parent Coach. Visit our website and or our Office of Christian Care and Counseling webpage for helpful links and more information on parenting. Visit our webpage, alfredstreet.org slash OCCC or email pastoralcounseling at alfredstreet.org. Attention all high school seniors of Alfred Street Baptist Church. It's that time of year. The 2024 ASBC High School Senior Scholarship applications are now being accepted online. Calling all parents and guardians of high school seniors to visit our website. Complete the application today. More detailed information can be found on our website. The application deadline is May 15th, so don't wait. Please complete your application today. Men, brothers, Exciting news! Join us for Spring Cleaning, a men's guide to balance, a journey of self-discovery and intentional living. Our aim is to provide tangible tools and insights to help men achieve balance and wellness in the major areas of life. In a world filled with hustle, it's easy to feel overwhelmed. Work, relationships, health, it's a lot to juggle. But Fear not, because we're here to guide you through the process of decluttering your life and finding balance in every aspect. Brothers, let's spring clean together and embrace a life that aligns with our truest selves. Come in fellowship with the Men's Ministry of Alfred Street on Wednesday, March 20th, from 6.30 p.m. to 8.45 p.m. This is our monthly Real Talk Fellowship Series, Thriving Together. Men will join in person at the ASBC Building 331 First Floor Conference Room. Please visit our website to register your attendance or email men at alfredstreet.org. Alfred Street family, as we continue our journey to the cross, we invite you to an evangelism encounter virtual online experience on Saturday, March 23rd from 9.30 a.m. until 11 a.m. with the Evangelism Ministry. This 90-minute learning session is designed for individuals to learn more about everyday evangelism, how important it is to the family of God's growth and effectiveness. Open and welcome to all who want to explore and sharpen their witnessing skills. No prior knowledge is required to join this event. For questions, please email evangelism at alfredstreet.org. The Chronic Pain Support Group is back by popular demand. Every Wednesday, starting on March 6th through July 24th, starting from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern, for an in-person experience. Our new location will be building 325 at 325 South Patrick Street, second floor in the crossover space. Chronic Pain Anonymous is a worldwide weekly fellowship of individuals that understand the isolation, fear, and despair that many have experienced when living with unpredictable and life-changing chronic illness and chronic pain. This is a weekly support group. Email pastoralcounseling at alfredstreet.org for details. Speaking of grief, Alfred Street's Office of Christian Care and Counseling, in conjunction with our Grief Share Ministry, presents their 2024 Spring Sessions, starting on March 14th through June 13th, and every Thursday night, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. This will be a virtual online experience. You must register online to receive the webinar information. Remember, Grief is a natural, complex, and emotional response to loss. The Grief Share sessions are a great support system. Email griefshare at alfredstreet.org for details. Pastor Wesley's pick for our March Book of the Month is Medgar and Murley, Medgar Evers and the Love Story That Awakened America by author Joanne Reed. 
This number one New York Times bestseller by MSNBC's Joanne Reed is a triumphant work of biography that repositions slain civil rights pioneer Medgar Evers at the heart of America's struggle for freedom and celebrates Merle Evers' extraordinary activism after her husband's assassination in the driveway of their Mississippi home. Be sure to pick up a copy of this book from your favorite retailer. Hey everybody, I'm Minister Otis Byrd Jr. and it's my honor to serve as the assistant to the pastor for online ministry and engagement here at the Alfred Street Baptist Church. And guess what? I have some exciting news to share with you. I'm glad you asked. It's our new live pre-worship broadcast, The Prelude. I got you. Every Sunday morning, we will go live reporting from inside the walls of ASBC to inform you of what's going on in these Alfred streets, to intentionally engage with our faithful online viewers, and just to have some fun together before worship service begins. It will begin airing on Sunday, February 4th. Online viewers, get ready to interact with us live in the chat. Get ready to share with us your name, your city, and any other comments you'd like to share with us. We are excited about this endeavor and we hope to see you there. Are you looking for an incredible opportunity to share your musical talents? If so, look no further. Alfred Street Sanctified Symphony Orchestra is thrilled to announce that they are recruiting talented musicians like you to join their harmonious family. They're calling for all musicians to join them every Friday evening from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Send an email to sanctifiedsymphony at alfredstreet.org if interested. They can't wait to welcome you into the Alfred Street Baptist Church Sanctified Symphony Orchestra. Hey, Alfred Street. Versus is back in stock. Our Versus team has been working around the clock to create another batch of our popular Versus Bible-based trivia card game, and they're now available for purchase. That's right. Purchase your set of Versus cards today before we sell out again. Visit our website or ASBC app and be the first to get your hands on Versus, a Bible-based trivia game by Alfred Street Baptist Church. Alfred Street's Office of Christian Care and Counseling in conjunction with the Health and Well-Being Recovery Ministry present a bi-weekly peer support session virtually via Zoom. That's every first and third Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Visit our website for the Zoom link information. The Recovery Ministry peer support sessions will provide a safe and confidential environment to confront addictions, compulsive behaviors, and issues that interfere with a renewed relationship with God. Email recovery at alfredstreet.org for details. Calling all parents and guardians of children, youth, and teens. Alfred Street's Children and Youth Ministries are back. We're currently accepting registrations for Kid Street, Crossover, and Higher Ground. Visit our website to register your child or youth today. Alfred Street invites everyone to join the Joyce K. Peterson Handbell Ringers. They are thrilled to announce that their ensemble recruitment is now open. If you have a passion for music and a heart for worship, we invite you to be a part of this harmonious journey. If you can read music and are eager to contribute your talents to a musical ministry that touches souls, this is your moment to shine. For more info and to express your interest, please email handbell at alfredstreet.org. Our Faith Savage Gun Tutorial Ministry has a new home online. Communicate, learn, and stay informed all in one place. Visit our new webpage and check us out today at alfredstreet.org. Email tutorial at alfredstreet.org for details. Our ASBC Village Study Guide is now available on the website to download. Be sure to check out a copy if you want to go deeper with Pastor Wesley's sermon prepared for you by the Villages of Alfred Street team. The guide is available online at alfredstreet.org. Hey, Alfred Street family and friends. Are you visiting us for the very first time? Or perhaps you're new to Alfred Street and you want to stay connected to us or receive the latest Alfred Street updates via text. If so, all visitors text the word visitors with an S to our new direct text number, 571-977-4525. That's 571-977-4525. Also, we invite you to tune in to our Faith Forward weekly radio broadcast featuring Pastor Howard John Wesley 
every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Magic 102.3 FM and 92.7 FM for a powerful sermon that will move you forward in your faith. We want to thank you for tuning into Alpha Street's live worship experience. Again, this is Charnel King, Social Media Manager. For more information on what's happening here at Alpha Street, make sure to check out our website and social media platforms. We hope you have a blessed week.